In my seven years of experience speedrunning Wii Sports, I've gathered loads of information about this game that some may not know about. In this first episode of Facts and Glitches, I'd like to dive deep into the information web of Wii Sports. On the 1.01 the 1.02 versions of the game, the Wiimote on the main menu will have the protective jacket on. This does not appear in the 1.00 version of the game. Furthermore, on the 1.00 version of the game, there is a weird 1.3 second pause at the start of each golf training game. This pause isn't on the 1.01 or 1.02 version of the game. If you hold 2 before entering a sport, interesting things can happen. In tennis, you will play on a blue court. In golf, you will have no HUD, meaning you will not be able to see the wind or the map. This was referred to as expert mode in leaked documents, not to be confused with the expert course. You can skip watching the tutorial in golf by playing in expert mode no matter the skill level. Despite there being a cap of 2000 XP on the skill graph, it is still possible to go over it. The highest recorded skill points that have been obtained by a person in each sport are 2399 in tennis, 3099 in baseball, 2,213 in bowling, 2,868 in golf, 3,124 in boxing. The flags in golf have interesting collisions. You can hit the flag straight on with the driver shot and the ball will drop straight down, potentially going directly in the hole. It is worth noting this is possible for all club types. It is even possible to hit the flag with the putter by using hacks. The collision in this game isn't necessarily the best, and it is actually possible to get stuck inside the pole while it is in the hole. It is also possible to get stuck inside other things like trees. It was previously thought that 0.6 feet from the hole was the closest you could land on the ground without going into the hole. However, it is possible to get 0.5 feet from the hole if your ball gets stuck on the outer ring of the cup. With the new discovery of the disconnected shot, it is possible to get 0.1 feet from the hole. By doing a disconnected shot into the hole on the 1.01 version of the game, you can let the 30 second out of bounds timer run out, then reconnect. Since the out of bounds timer expired, the game will presume that you went out of bounds, but you will be 0.1 feet from the hole. It is worth noting that you will have to wait more than the normal 30 seconds due to the massive amounts of lag you get from this shot. It is likely that your game's FPS will drop from 60 down to around 5 before the timer expires. It is possible for the ball to bounce out of the hole after going in. This does not count as going in the hole. It is possible to hit the ball in golf after it's been hit. By shaking the Wiimote after hitting the ball, it will increase the power by a small margin. This can actually be very helpful if you realize you undershoot a shot and you can still use these extra hits to correct the power of the shot. The highest recorded number of hits in one stroke is 4. These extra hits do not impact your score at all. In the dodging training game for boxing, the timer actually lasts 70 seconds despite only showing it takes 60.
The working bag training game can cause extreme amounts of lag. The timer without scoring any points is 60 seconds. Getting a score of 40 will take around 75 seconds. Getting a score of 20 will take around 69 seconds. Lag can also occur on the throwing punches training game, but much less time is added onto the timer. At most, I was able to add 3 more seconds to the timer. Most games will just have a single value that toggles the ability to pause in order to avoid unintended behavior such as pausing inside of another menu. The developers did implement pausing in this way, however they also decided to add other requirements for pausing the game. In addition to this value that toggles the ability to pause, which we call the pause flag, the game also factors in the movement of the Wii Remote. Let's take a look at the code that handles pausing to get a better understanding of how the movement of the remote is important. The first block of code is just used to see if any player is pressing the pause button, as that's obviously the most important requirement. One thing to note about the code here is that it checks each Wii Remote that is in use, not each Wii Remote that is connected to the console. This is just to ensure that people who aren't currently playing, but do have a paired Wii Remote, can't pause the game. After the game determines that someone who's playing is pressing the pause button, it then checks whether the pause flag is enabled. The pause flag is only disabled in a few situations. In bowling, the pause flag is disabled when you're holding B to throw the ball, and when the ball is rolling down the lane and the pins aren't done moving. In golf, the pause flag is disabled while you're holding A to ready your swing, and while the ball is moving after you take your shot. Assuming you're not in one of these situations, the game will see that the pause flag is enabled, and it'll check the next requirement. It accesses the data from the Wii Remote's accelerometer, and looks at how the Wii Remote is moving. We don't yet know exactly how the acceleration is represented, or how it's scaled, but we do know that it covers every axis, and ranges from 0 to about 6.5. To help visualize this, a normal swing in golf measures about 1.2. If the Wii Remote is accelerating faster than 0.2 units on any axis, the game will discard your pause input. You've probably seen this while playing, and just didn't notice. It's likely that's why speedrunners get into the habit of holding the remote still before they pause to exit a sport. If the pause flag is enabled, and the Wii Remote is accelerating under the threshold, the pause request will be considered valid. If you think the acceleration requirement doesn't make sense, I'm with you on that one. I'm glad they didn't keep this in Wii Sports Resort. That is it for the first episode of Wii Sports Facts and Glitches. If you enjoyed this type of content, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button as it really helps me out with the algorithm. I appreciate every one of you watching. Take care.